What's the word, y'all? I know we can all agree, but a winner go home game seven scenario is the best thing in sports, bar none. A couple days leading up to this, I'm like, man, how am I gonna balance this? It's Mother's Day, you know what I'm saying? I wanna give my flowers to my Dukes for all of the great things she's done for me in my 26 years of life. She comes over, I tell her, I, I might, I might, in the middle of your day, ma, I might have to go to the work office just to film a video. She say, baby, do your thing. So shout out to mom and shout out to all the moms out there, for real, this is your day. Or was it Jason Tatum's day? I, 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 I can't really tell at this point. This man just had one of the weirdest series I've seen from a star caliber player where he went quarters at a time in the seven game series where he could not find the basket at all. Like, like somebody took his abilities as if we in Space Jam and then in the game seven, he breaks the record for the most points in a game seven. Breaking Steph Curry's record, the, the record lasted like two weeks, y'all. That's what it feels like at least. 51 points and y'all know me. I start a video before the game is even over. Jaden Springer's out here doing stuff right now. I, do, I could not care less. And now we got the 2020 NBA bubble rematches where we got the Heat and the Celtics and then we got the Lakers and the Nuggets coming up soon. Since we got a few days between now and when those series start, I'm going to chill for a little bit and then we'll talk about those series once we get a little bit close. I think game one of Lakers Nuggets is on Tuesday. I more want to focus on this series and focus on the 76ers. Let's be real. Again, flowers to Jason Tatum. Joe Mazzulla starting Robert Williams in game six was huge. And you saw that again tonight between Al Horford and Robert Williams. Joel Embiid couldn't do nothing. And in my last video when we were talking about this series, I told y'all that I felt pretty confident in the, in the Celtics. Oh, did I say it on the podcast? Either way, I, I've said somewhere on this platform that I felt very confident in the Celtics because that moment where the, the 76ers were up in game six and they eventually went on to not give Joel Embiid the ball for four minutes and they could not score for longer than that. I, th that was the series right there in my eyes and it turned out to be true and it wasn't even close I mean they went on an extreme run where it was what 60 to 55 and then you look up and now it's 80 to 55 Like they went so cold and the Celtics and Jason Tatum went up and up and up and now they pre preparing for Jimmy Butler And we'll, again, we'll talk about that. I want to focus on the 76ers I, I did a little bit of trolling on Twitter today. Y'all know I got no ill will to no organization whatsoever But it feels like deja vu uh, for what the seventh year in a row Joel Embiid has not had a conference finals appearance We're gonna talk about Joel Embiid pretty heavily um, in this video But this was one of no, this might have been their best chance since Kawhi Leonard shot Like I think I think that that Jimmy Butler JJ Reddick team with, with Ben Simmons who was playing good basketball and Joel Embiid That was like probably the best constructed team But this team let's let's not steer away from the fact that Joel Embiid just won MVP James Harden, he did not make an All-NBA appearance, but he was All-NBA caliber. Got some votes here there. Tyrese Maxey was really good. P.J. Tucker was a good acquisition. Like, this team was constructed for a deep run, and here they are again being eliminated in the second round. He's got a notification that says Ben Simmons was tuned in. What am I looking at? Ben Simmons is a troll. Ben Simmons is a troll. Either, either way, either way, um, there's a lot of people to blame here. Obviously, there's not one singular person that gets the full blame for this series in the way it did. I know that we, we knew that Boston versus Philly were going to happen. We, we've known this for pretty much months that these two teams will match up against each other. But still, I do believe that the 76ers had enough to win this series and ultimately they lost. There's blame here for Joel Embiid. There's blame here for Doc Rivers. There's blame here for James Harden. There's blame here for the role players. Like, everybody gets their own piece. But my, my argument is that Joel Embiid should get one of the bigger pieces here. And I, I don't want y'all to think this is any anti-Joel Embiid. I voted him for MVP on my unofficial ballot. Joel Embiid is a great NBA player, but I'm just looking at the games, th this series, and everything we know about these players. Because though, in this game seven, James Harden had another stinker in a win or go home game. Uh, you can talk about that too. James Harden also had two 40-point games to even get us to the point where this is a game seven. So he's he's got he's got a slight pass. He's got a slight pass because the MVP of the league did not have more than one MVP performance in this playoff series. And I know he's dealing with the knee thing. He had a brace on for the great majority of the series. I understand that, but he's still the MVP of the league in the uh, win or go home game. And he was non-existent. Al Horford is old enough to be my grandfather. And he put the clamps on, not just this game, for a good chunk of this series. Let me see. What did Joel Embiid end up with? He ended up with 15-8 and eight in a game seven. Harden ended up with 9-7-6. and six. Again, like, they didn't get production from any of their two-star players. But again, we're focused on, focusing on Joel right now. And listen, Al Horford is a great, great defender. There's a reason why a few years ago, the 76ers themselves signed Al Horford because they were tired of that man. And they didn't want, they, they saw him as a Joel Embiid stopper, genuinely. 
And so they brought him onto the team. That didn't work out. Then he went back to Boston and reset everything, and he's back to being a Joel Embiid stopper. He's the Joel Embiid whisperer. There's points, points in this series where, where P.J. Tucker, who might be the heart and soul of the team, I don't know. P.J. Tucker had to look Joel Embiid in his face and say, Ain't no more, ain't no dude out here that can guard you one on one. And that was after Al Warford had a couple possessions back to back to back where he was putting the absolute clamps on him. You know, I remember if this was game four, game five, regardless, PJ had to hype up the league MVP to tell him you're the MVP for a reason. And I, I don't think you should have to go through that with an MVP player. This was a dreadful, dreadful series. And I said something very similarly about, um, Kevin Durant when they got eliminated because Kevin Durant averaged 29 points but like the counter stats of Kevin Durant were insane but but you're looking at Kevin Durant and Joel Embiid against themselves you know what I'm saying I'm not comparing Joel Embiid to an average center where you can tell me look at those stats Kenny he had a great series because if he was replaced by this player that's not relevant anymore this is the playoffs this is where people win championships. This is where we, we separate the very, very good players from the all-time players. This is what we're here for. And Joel Embiid has yet to give us an all-star, Hall of Fame-worthy run. And sometimes these Hall of Fame-worthy runs don't even end in the championship. We've seen plenty of people going Hall of Like Jimmy Butler's bubble run was a Hall of Fame caliber run. Do we make the Hall of Fame? Uh, that's not the conversation right now. But those type of runs exist. I would argue that with, with Nikola Jokic, and I know there's going to be a lot of compare between Jokic and Joel Embiid since Joel Embiid just won the MVP, whatever. What Nikola Jokic is doing right now is Hall of Fame, it's a Hall of Fame run currently. He just averaged a 35-point triple-double to defeat Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. That's, that's elite. And Joel Embiid is yet to do that for us. The best I can think is in that Philly versus Atlanta Hawks series. He was great. I don't know what he averaged, but he was great in that series. Ultimately, they ended up losing. And then Ben Simmons was like the overall scapegoat from everybody. And for good reason. I'm not saying he didn't deserve the criticism that he got. But like, it was like, okay, it was Ben Simmons. Now let's let's now do this. We got, we got James Harden coming to town now. This is the time. And I don't know where they go. We talk about every single iteration of a championship quality team having windows, right? And, and I ask people on Twitter, did the window shut? James Harden is a free agent, and we've heard from, I don't remember, was it Sean? I think we've heard from Shams all season long about James Harden is thinking about Houston again. Houston got money. Houston just paid Ime Udoka to come change some things. They got money. Ime say in his presser, they're not looking to lose no more. And James Harden's one of the best players on the market, and he has history there. Like, So if James decides to walk, I, I, don't, know what to, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to do. This was the year that was supposed to be the run. Even if the run is a conference finals appearance and you lose, a championship appearance and you lose, at least you got over the next hump. You have not been able to get past the second round. You have a game seven where Ben Simmons don't, don't uh, oh no, you had a game seven where uh, Kawhi Leonard hits one of the craziest shots of all time. You have a game seven where Ben Simmons passed the ball when he's guarded by Trey Young. And now we got the game seven where the MVP of the league got stopped by Al Warford. Like, this is bad, man. This is bad, bad, bad. And the Philly fans are, are fed up. I asked people on Twitter, 76ers fans, what change do you want to see this offseason? And again, everybody right now is high on emotion because they just got eliminated. And, and obviously, these aren't the opinions that some of them will, will stay with. For example, this guy's a Philly fan because he's got the picture of Kobe in a Eagles jersey. Okay. Um, let Harden walk. Trade and be for every first round pick ever. Trade Toby for anything. Fire Doc and rebuild. Bring back Monty. Sign and trade Harden if possible. Bring in depth and wing defense and a good playmaker. We have one last shot with Embiid. One last. And you know what? This last sentence might be an absolute truth. Because right now in Joel Embiid's career, he's had Jimmy Butler. He's had Ben Simmons. He's had James Harden. And maybe, some, maybe there's another all-star caliber player that comes in this next integration. But like, He's had a plethora of great players around him, um, and it still hasn't worked out yet. But I'm looking for some tweets. There are some diehard 76er fans that I follow. Again, I, I try to follow a few people in every single fandom just because I want to see what they're believing. And one of them, a guy that I truly respect in Philly fandom, was like, it doesn't matter. I'm done. And I, I, I don't think that's going to be the case for him, you know what I'm saying, knowing his history and stuff. But I can understand the emotion that he's going through right now. The only thing I will push back on is, is the idea of resetting a, a team that's been good for years and starting over for the process again. Like 80% of rebuilds fail, right? Ultimately, 80. I'm just making up a number. Most rebuilds fail. But the process, y'all remember what the process was? Do you remember how many years of bottom of the league? Can, can y'all endure that again? 
Like, I find that hard to believe. Well, I feel like there might be some retooling if you're going to fire Doc, which feels like, I mean, I don't even know if they're going to let him get an exit interview. He's probably out the door. You got good coaches out there. You got Coach Bud. Um, I know he ain't perfect. But you also got Monty Williams, who just got fired yesterday. Like, there might be a world where changing the coaching is, is the main thing that you can worry on. Um, and maybe you could get people back on the bandwagon. E either way, this was a rough watch, specifically in Game 7. Um, and I have no idea what's next for Philly. I feel like there's a hundred more things I can talk about. I'm going to end it right there um, and get back to Mother's Day with my moms. <laughs> and then if something else comes up, then yeah, we can always make more videos.